we stand. God, you truly get the glory. Come, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for this day, dear God. We thank you for this opportunity to praise you, God. We invite your spirit in this place, oh God, because you truly get the glory, God. You get the glory for waking us up this morning. You get the glory for the starting us on our day, dear God. We thank you, Lord, because you get the glory that is not about us, oh God. It's not about our titles. It's not about our name. But, Lord, it's about your name that's higher than any other name. It's about what you did on the cross for us, oh God. It's about for you dying for us, oh God. It's about you rising on the third day, oh God. You get the glory, God, for being unchanging. You get the glory, God, because of your power. You get the glory, God, because you're wonderful. You get the glory, God. We praise you right now, God. Within everything going around, we will still praise you, oh God. With us grieving in our heart, we will still praise you, oh God, because you're unchanging. We praise you, oh God, because you're wonderful. We praise you, oh God. We invite your spirit in this place, oh God. Breathe on us, oh God. Breathe on our minds, oh God. Breathe on our hearts, oh God. We invite you, Lord, because we need a change on today. We invite you, oh Lord, because we need a fresh wind on today. We invite you in here, oh Lord. We want to hear from you, God. We want you in every prayer, oh God. We want you in every song, oh God. We want you in every word spoken, oh God. We can't do this without you, Lord. We can't move without you, Lord. Not one day without you, Lord. Not one hour without you, Lord. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you in our worship. We need you in our living. We need you in our breathing. We need you, God. Because you're Alpha and Omega. We need you, God. Because you're the beginning and the end. We need you, God. Because you're the great I am. We need you, God. Because you are Savior, oh Lord. You are healer, oh Lord. You are deliverer, Lord. We need you, God. And we invite you in this place. And we say, great Lord, have your way. Mighty God, have your way. Wonderful God, have your way. Have your way with your children. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Cover the minds of your people, oh God. Have your way in this place. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you remain standing for the reading of the word, I'll be reading the 57th number of Psalms. Starting at the seventh verse, and it says, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing praise and give praise. Awake up my glory, awake, sorry street and heart. I myself would awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let the glory be above all the earth. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. That was the 57th number of Psalms, the 7th through the 11th verse. We would now have our own mother, Johnson, coming with a word from the mothers. Amen. within me bless his holy name for I do give honor to God today to his son Jesus and to the power of the Holy Ghost to our pastor first lady and all the saints that's assembled here on today I hope you came looking for a blessing from the Lord because the presence of the Lord is here and I thank him for that I thank him for being here I've been out a long time I've I have never missed this much time in church in all my life but you know what? We don't know when our last day is going to be here. So we might as well put the pedal to the metal and go on and meet the king when he comes back. I thank you for your prayers while I was away and I kind of slipped out today. And I told him, I said, well, I'll be on to see you when I get out of service. I started to said, no, I think I'll go early this morning. I said, no, I'm not going early this morning. I'm coming to church. All right. 
So I'm glad to be here. You know what? I don't be here praising God with y'all, but I'll tell you, I have some mighty good times by myself. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. That's what keeps me going. Yeah. God gives me a song in the night. Uh oh. Every time I wake up, there's a song going on inside. Yeah. Me. Yes. And that's what keeps me afloat. So I thank God. He's, he's doing a little better, but he's sick. He is sick. So you pray for me that God will take us through and do what we have to do. And I'm telling you, I was just knocked out of the box about Sister Renee last night. Yeah. We don't, listen, saints, we don't know where they're going to catch us at. That's right. And I told my daughter this morning, I said, we won't be, we got to be ready. We can't be getting ready. That's right. So we better, as Jane Brown said, we better get on a good foot. Because I know Jesus is soon to come. I feel it all down in my belly. And we better be ready when he comes. So I'm just so glad to see each of you. And I hope you were happy when he said, let us go into the house of the Lord today. Because there is joy in the presence of the Lord. I thought about a song, but I'm not going to try to sing it. And you know, I, I ran across one this week. I told him I got to tell Pastor about that one. Okay. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> but it, it says, uh, in the morning when I rise. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, I want to rise holy. When I rise, I want to rise up holy. When I rise, oh, when I rise, when I rise, oh, when I rise, when I rise, oh, I want to see Jesus.
One thing that we also realize in the morning is that there is nobody like the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless each and every one of you all. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we make the choice to rejoice and to be glad in there. Let's thank God for Mother Johnson on this morning. Thank you, Mother. Thank God for our praise team this morning. Let's praise God for them. Appreciate their dedication and their, uh, their commitment to uh, ministry excellence. Uh, listen, I, I know that there's a lot that's on our mind on today. Uh, there, it's hot outside. That's on your mind. <laughs> uh, of course, we, we, uh, we celebrate the elevation or the graduation or the ascension of one of our saints going to be with the Lord, Sister Renee Springer. Can we celebrate her life? Oh, come on. Let's celebrate her life. Yeah, we celebrate her life. We celebrate her life. You know, the Lord could have fixed it where we never even knew her. He could have situated where you did not have the pleasure of coming in acquaintance with her, with her gold green self. Yeah, Sister Springer was such a jewel to our church. Uh, Deacon Stanette shared with me about her commitment under the leadership of Superintendent Leo Jackson. That's when she came to be a member of Pilgrim Temple historic Pilgrim Temple, now Jackson Memorial Temple, Church of God in Christ, and her commitment remains secure. Uh, the thing I loved about uh, Sister Springer is that she wasn't so much committed to me, although she loved me, I believe she did, and she, she uh, supported me, but she was committed to the ministry. And when we get more people that's more committed to ministry than they are people, Oh, we're going to have something. Oh, I, I know I said something there. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I, I, know, I know we are a, 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 a personality-driven culture, uh, but that's not how God's church works. There's only one supreme personality. <laughs> There's only one that stands on the pinnacle of human existence, the loftiest idea in philosophy. He is the great I am. And when we get to the place, when we develop a, a culture that focuses on Jesus Christ, yeah, we'll put everything else in perspective. All right? And so I'm going to ask you to do what the Bible says. I want you to rejoice. And again, I said rejoice. Oh, yeah. Because guess what? Guess what? Sister Renee didn't wake up this morning on this side. <laughs> and y'all know I don't make it a habit of putting nobody in heaven or hell. But, you know, I am a pretty good fruit inspector. Uh, and, and, I, and I can look at, I can look at an orange and call it an orange. And I won't mistake it for an apple, Sister Mary Williams. No, but I, I think I've seen enough fruit that by the the regulations that's been given to us in the 66 books of the Bible, that by the grading criteria that's been presented to us in the word of God, I see some things that line up with fellowship and line up with reconciliation that lines up with I'm in God's good graces. And don't you know we got to remember what Bishop Williams said, don't get called dead without God. That when I close my eyes on this side, hey, I, I'm not going to wake them up fearful. I'm not going to wake them up resentful. I'm not going to wake up a holding back, but I'm going to open my eyes in peace. Knowing that I'm going to see the God of my salvation. Knowing that I'm going to see that my Redeemer still lives. Knowing that I'm going to see the great I am, the soon coming King the rock in a weary land the shelter in a time of storm he's still a lily in the valley yeah and he can give you joy in the midst of the storm 
Yeah, 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 yeah. God never promised to stop a storm. Oh, but Mother Constantine, he told you he'd give you peace right in the middle of it. Yeah, he, he can be your hiding place. And so that's why when we came today, I came with the expectation that we would rejoice in the God of our salvation. We would rejoice in the promise that he gave us. We'd rejoice in knowing that if we are a believer in Jesus Christ, our, our destiny is sure. We've got some assurance and insurance in the God of the Bible. Yeah, we've got something that the world can't take from us. Amen. And so when you think about the life of Sister, Sister Springer, you think about all the great things that she has done uh, in ministry. In ministry. Uh, we, have to, we have to be grateful to God. We have to be grateful to God for the great things that he has done. Amen. I was thinking this morning... Um, thinking this morning and last night about Sister Springer was so faithful to the prayer ministry. You didn't have to think about it. It, it, was, it became a thing, a clockwork of Sister Maisha Cannon. What is Maisha's middle name? Uh, it's not none of your business. It is, it is Maisha Monique Cannon. Yeah. I was thinking about that, Sister MMC, I was thinking uh, about how consistent she was with the prayer ministry and, and keeping things on track and that she was writing uh, people's names in the comment section when she wasn't feeling good herself. She, she was encouraging the saints to pray for other people while she wasn't feeling good. She, so Sister Springer, Sister Springer was was pushing us to be consistent in prayer when she needed prayer. Oh, you talking about a saint. You talking about the attributes of a believer. That sounds good right there. Uh, you, you, you talking about what it, what it means to live this life. Yeah, and so, yeah, you, you know, our hearts are are broken and, and, and we're, we're mourning because that's really our, our natural response. It is, it is, right? Uh, uh, but, but when you start thinking about it, uh, uh, Sister Renee is not mourning leaving us. Sister Renee is not even going to miss us. Sister Renee got a head start on us because the Bible declares that, uh, that at the trumpet sounding, those that are dead in Christ, they're going to get up first. And we that remain, we're going to be called up to do what? We're going to meet them in the air. So Sister Renee is at a point of expectation. She's looking for you to live right. She's looking for you to treat your neighbor right. She's looking for you to hold to God's unchanging hand because she's expecting us. Uh, and, and in the morning, Sister Nadiri, that when we rise, yeah, I want to rise holy. Yeah, I, I want to see Jesus when I rise so that all of the saints that's waiting on us, all of the saints that's expecting us, you know your loved one that gone on to be with the Lord, they waiting on you. Now, they're not in a hurry for you to die, but they waiting on you. Uh, and we're going to see them and see Jesus. So would you help me rejoice and let's celebrate the life of Sister Renee Springer. Come on. Yeah. Thank God for the legacy. Thank God for the commitment. We thank God for her sacrifice. Hallelujah. All right, listen. Listen, uh, uh, a great friend and brother is with us this morning, uh, and I'm, I'm so glad that he's here. He is the, the president of uh, what was formerly called Urban Initiatives for the Church of God in Christ. Now it's called the, C, the Bishop C.E. Blake Ministry Initiative. Still, st still called Urban Initiative. All right, it's still called Urban Initiative, so we celebrate 
uh, the president and director who was here. He was here uh, to, um, uh, he was in Detroit for their community day uh, yesterday. And then we already talked last week. He's going to be with us next year. I know already, I know already got that thing fixed. <laughs> Uh, but he's here with us today, and I, I want him to come and be a blessing to us. Uh, he, he comes from Arkansas under the leadership of Bishop, Bishop Jewel Withers, one of the fathers of our church. And uh, we're grateful that he's going to share with us. I speak none other of Superintendent Anthony Coleman. Uh, immediately after this song, our praise team is going to render. Uh, we're going to ask you to stand and receive our speaker for this morning. On our men's day, Superintendent Anthony Coleman. Amen. Let's say amen for the praise team as they come.
God, our Savior. And as we come standing behind this sacred desk, I ask that you would hide us behind the cross. Minister to your people, God. Give us a word, God, that will convict, that will encourage, that will uplift, that will cause signs and wonders to follow those that believe. And we appreciate you for your word. Thank you for this pastor and this wife and those that labor in this part of your vineyard. That you continue to give vision and dream and anoint God, but giving provision for the house in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Before you sit down, I want to, so I won't have you up and down. If you would, turn your Bibles. I don't know if that's still, okay, praise God. Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Daniel. This is a very familiar passage, a very familiar story. If you've been in church any time, if you've been in church any time before, you would have heard this story about Nebuchadnezzar, the three Hebrew boys. Y'all heard about them? And chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3, and I'm going to read two or three verses there. If you would, uh, turn to Daniel chapter 3, looking at verse 17, 18, and 19. It was... These three Hebrew boys that were standing in front of Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar told them and told the children of Israel, told the Hebrews, if y'all don't bow when you hear the music, I'm throwing you in a fiery furnace. There were only three boys that said that we wouldn't do it. Now look at verse 17. This is what they said to the king. If we are thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able. Come on, shout, he's able. He's able to deliver us from it, and he will. Come on, shout, he will. He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, I'm reading from the NIV version. If he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious. He was mad at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. And the Bible says he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. Just for a few fleeting moments, if you would, just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know the enemy meant it for bad, but tell him it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Come on, shout. It didn't work. It didn't work. Now, before you take your seat, I want you to put your devices, put your Bibles down, and I want you to give God some glory in this house. Come on, clap your hands. Oh, ye people, and shout unto God. I don't know how you can clap your hands without opening your mouth. 
Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and give God some praise. Hallelujah. I know y'all trying to figure me out, but I'm trying to figure you out too. If I'm in a sanctified church, if I'm in a church that believes in giving God praise. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Will y'all will y'all just indulge me just for a moment? Just indulge me for a moment. We've had to take testimonies out of the search many times because we forgot how to testify. But can y'all think of one thing that God has done for you? Come on, just think of one thing that God has done for you. My God, I want you to whisper that one thing to your neighbor. Come on, just tell your neighbor one thing God has done for you. It may be he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, gave you activities of your limb. I want you to give God praise like he did it for you. Because if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I thank God. Hallelujah. How many of y'all thank God for being here this morning? I'm just a country boy. And I was in the city all day yesterday and Friday in Detroit. And then when I came here, I said, this looked like home for me. Oh, but see, see, I don't know if y'all are excited about it, but I'm happy about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I just feel at home. Glory to God. Can I just be myself? Put me in A flat, Doc. Put me in A flat. We want to thank God for this pastor. God bless this superintendent. God bless this vice chairman. God bless my friend and my brother. Come on, let's praise God for your leader, Pastor Kaimba Nolan. God bless you, man. Love you, bro. And uh, to his wife I saw earlier, praise God. And uh, praise God for her and family. God bless each of you. Y'all be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is just good to be here. Uh, in God's house. It's good to be here uh, with friends and family. I know y'all don't know me. I don't know you either, but I do know God. And so since anybody out there know God, so since we know God, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Is that all right? And uh, I'm just grateful to be here and you find me saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I love the Lord. I do. I do. I love the Lord. Amen. If I don't know anything else, I know I love the Lord. Amen. And I know I love him because I live for him. And I'm so glad, hallelujah, he brought me out of darkness into a marvelous light. You're looking at a miracle, and I thank God for that. I bring your greetings from the Marion Church of God in Christ in Marion, Arkansas, uh, where we serve and have been there for a while. And he shared with you our bishop, the Bishop Jewel R. Withers, Jr. And, uh, and I thank God uh, for him allowing us, of course, uh, to travel and to be a part of this grand old church of God in Christ along with being uh, a part of urban initiatives and he knows and the church knows that we travel quite a bit I'm not out on Sundays usually but I thank God hallelujah that when I come to Detroit God's country I, I had to come to see the presiding bishop and I had to come see my friend amen and uh, so I praise God that we're we're here and so I bring you greetings and my wife uh, who is 18 years, thank the Lord, breast cancer healed. If I don't have any reason to praise God for, that's a reason. Yeah, I said breast cancer healed. And we thank God, hallelujah, that God can do anything but fail. I've been through the chemo and all of that kind of stuff. I know what it means. I know what it feels like, hallelujah. But I thank God that God has healed her body and uh, blessed her soul uh, even now. And so we're here uh, praising God and uh, thanking the Lord that we're doing, trying to do a great work through the urban initiatives. And I appreciate the presiding bishop. And I thank God for people like your pastor who continues to support, who continues to encourage and uh, uplift us and just tell us to hang in there. And I thank God for him. Thank God for your auspicious leader. Amen. He's known across the country as a, just a great man, a nice man. He's always been so nice to me, and uh, I love him for that and appreciate God for where God is taking him. And so I'm just here praising the Lord, and uh, you say, well, what is he doing? I'm trying to see, I'm trying to fill out and see how, how y'all, amen, like to praise God in the house. 
I'm a country boy. We like to dance and shout and run and roll in the flow. And uh, I know I may have my Ph.D. and all that kind of stuff, but it don't matter. Amen. I'll get in the flow with you. Amen. I'll get in the floor with you. I'm, I'm fourth generation church of God in Christ. So I've been here all my life. I know the church. Amen. I know you. Amen. And I just thank God that I'm here today uh, because somebody prayed. I just got an old song. Can I get a little bit of my nervous bugs and butterflies out? It's an old school song. You got me an A flat doc? Hallelujah. It just says it like this. I know the law. We'll make a way. Y'all ever heard that? Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Well, y'all can help me sing it if you know it. Hallelujah. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Will make a way for you. Oh, yes, He will surely, He'll surely see you through. Hallelujah! I know the Lord will make a way. Mm. Yes, He will. When I was sick, y'all, and I couldn't, seem like I couldn't get well, Jesus healed my body, and right now I can tell, come on, let's just go to the end, I know the Lord will make a way, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Come on, everybody. Yes, he will. Won't he do it? Won't he heal your body? Say yes. Did he save your soul? Yes, he will. Come on, do I have a witness? Wave your hand. Yes, he will. Oh, I know the Lord, oh, will make a way, oh, yes, yes, he will, hallelujah, come on, look at somebody and say, yes, he will, come on, say it like you mean it, yes, he will, hallelujah. know God will make a way. You're looking at a survivor. You're looking at, hallelujah, one who's gone through. As I share with you this word today, I want to give my testimony in this message. Back in 2007, pastor, I was, I started a church in Newport, Arkansas, and that church was a wonderful church. I started that church, planted that church. As a matter of fact, the media, after one year, told us that we were the fastest growing church in Northeast Arkansas. Doing great things, seeing people saved, bodies healed, souls delivered, people cast, demons cast out, things were happening in that church. God was doing so many great things that uh, we had grown. And matter of fact, we had grown um, so fast that we moved into four different locations in less than a year because we were growing so fast. And after seven years, I was bivocational at the time working for the university in Arkansas. I was bivocational and the Lord spoke to me and said, it was time for you to move on. I said, this doesn't really make sense, God. I'm at the height of ministry. I'm doing well at home. We're, we're, we're on our third house buying, and, and God is doing great things. My children are raised. They're going off to college, and uh, things are happening. Things are great. What do you mean by move on? I want you to leave Arkansas, and I want you to 
live in Atlanta, Georgia. I said, God, this doesn't make sense. And I was offered a job in Clark Atlanta University, working there for years. And um, I, I, I prayed about it, asked my father, talked to my bishop and others. And they said, listen, if this is God's will, we're going to back you. We're going to push you. We're supporting you. I said, I believe it's the will of God. My, my wife, of course, was with me. And we believe that it was the will of God, even in the height of ministry, what I believe, what I knew, what I knew God had for me. He challenged me to move. Do I have anybody out there that has ever been in a place in your life where God has challenged you to walk in faith? Where you may have been in places in your life where you didn't understand why, but God would challenge you to do something different? Am I by myself in here? Now, I promise you, we're going to get to this message, but I need some real folk. I don't need no folk that's bougie on me. I need some folk that's real, that know what I'm talking about by living a life of faith. When sometimes it doesn't make sense. Come on, look at somebody and say, don't make sense challenged me to move so I moved to Atlanta doing a good thing my God making more money I've ever made in my life in Atlanta working for the university doing what I do living in the in Atlanta in the big city I'm a country boy I'm from Arkansas so I don't see all these big big buildings and all I see is concrete everywhere but God blessed me to see and to rub shoulders with a lot of people right there upper echelon of folk right there in Atlanta and where we were raising millions of dollars and doing great things not just for the university but for even the body of Christ God was doing great things for me in Atlanta I thought I had it going on at the time but while I was in Atlanta something happened Mm. Uh, what happened my God while I was in Atlanta and uh, my wife was still at home in between transition while we were selling the house uh, while I was going home one weekend mm, um, I totaled a car going home one weekend had a flat and totaled it my son was driving and it totaled my car so I got home, and when we got home, uh, we got his car to go back to, 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 to Atlanta and as we were going back we totaled his car yeah, that's how I felt. My God, it didn't make sense to me. And uh, I said, okay, God, maybe you're trying to show me something. I don't quite get it, but let me go on back here. And so while I was there, just a few weeks later, hallelujah, somebody had broken into my condo. Oh, my God. Uh, and then while I'm sitting there thinking, my God, and knowing that God has brought me here by faith, it doesn't make sense, God, why you happen. I lose two cars. Somebody breaks into my condo. And then all of a sudden, when I get another car, I go outside and someone breaks into my car. Mm, yeah, just like you, Pastor, I felt like that and trying to figure this thing out. And uh, when he broke into my car, my God, I go back in and uh, live a few days. I get a phone call from my wife who's back at home trying to get things together. And she calls me and says, Anthony, um, a, a tree fell on the house. Oh, my God. I, I guess I'm the only one that has ever moved by faith, thought that God had moved you somewhere. And then all of a sudden you start questioning, uh, qu questioning God. Is this really you? Is this really what you want me to do? Is this really what you want me to go? And you told me to move it. You the one told me to pack up myself and move. Do I have a witness in here that has ever walked by faith and tried to wonder why in the world all of this stuff is happening to me? So, 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 while I was questioning God, while I was trying to figure out what was going on, while I was trying to figure out why, hallelujah, God spoke to me one day and he just asked me the question, what if I want you to go through this? Okay, 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 see, 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 some of y'all, some of y'all won't, won't walk with me here. Um, y'all already know the story. Y'all already know the story. I really don't have to go through the text. You already know that the three Hebrew boys had to go through the fire. So the question is, what if God want you to deal, deal with what you're dealing with? Are you hitting me what I say? I'm so sick of some preachers and prophets and folk like that that want to get up and say all you've got to do is jump up and turn around and then you'll get a thousand dollars in the bank. All you got to do is touch somebody and tell them everything going to turn around. Listen, I've come to a point in my life that sometime when I get home, things didn't change. See, y'all too bougie. Let me talk to some real people. My God, that, that no, listen, I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been living my word. I've been paying my tithes and giving my offering consistently. And it seemed like God just forgot about me. 
Oh, my God. Oh, my God, my God. And so, so, so that's how, my God, that, 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 that sometime you cannot forget, hallelujah, hallelujah, that God desires for us many times to go through. Why do I say that? Because you know how to, you learn how to pray when you was going through. Ooh, I guess I'm just by myself, my God. And so here in the text, the text declares that Brother Nebuchadnezzar told these three Hebrew boys, I want you, my God, hallelujah, to, I want you to when you hear the music, I need you to bow. But they were not going to bow to him as king. They were not going to bow him rather to him as a God. Are you hearing me what I say? But the question I have is, is that many times when we're talking about this story, we forget about the Hebrew nation. Okay, we forget about all of them folk. My God, the Bible declares, and if you study the text, you'll see that there were hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Hebrews. There were millions of church folk. Okay, who knew better? Mm -hmm. They knew better. And uh, the Bible declares that when the music sounded, instead of, my God, them standing up for righteousness, standing up for holding, all of them folk bowed down. Church folk. Mm -hmm. All of them bowed down. Why did they bow down? First of all, we must understand, people of God, that the Hebrews, they allowed fear to overtake them. Can I declare to you, beloved, that fear is most of the time the initial attack from the enemy. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, Nebuchadnezzar told them that when they heard the music play, they were supposed to bow and worship him. Hallelujah. They were afraid to face the fire. You must understand, people of God, that their reality, hallelujah, of fear was greater than the possibility of death. I know I'm talking to somebody in here because many of us have given into the works and the plan of the enemy because we could only see what was in front of us. And what was in front of us caused us to fear, caused us to back up, caused us, my God, to give up, caused us to isolate, caused us to quit. But I thank God that the Bible declares that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. People of God, you must understand that there is a difference between, watch this, the, 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 the spirit of fear and the emotions of being afraid. Come on, shout, there's a difference. There's a difference. See, the emotions of being afraid is an instinct that stimulates us to move. It's an emotion, my God, that stimulates us to do something different. So the emotions of fear or the emotions of being afraid is actually a good thing. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe y'all don't see deer like I do in Arkansas and what they call deer in the headlights. And so whenever we see a deer that jumps out in the front of a car when they see the headlights, instead of them moving, they stop. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, that's not my God. That's not, that's not an instinct that God gives us. He gives us an instinct that when we see danger, when we see danger in front of us, we, we run. Are y'all hearing me what I say? But it's the spirit of fear that many of us get captivated by. Why is the spirit of fear captivated? It's the spirit of fear that causes a stronghold. Yeah. It's the spirit of fear that causes us to be isolated. It's the spirit of fear that causes us to feel oppressed and depressed. It's the spirit of fear that captivates us, that causes us to isolate ourselves so that we feel powerless. Are you hearing me what I say? But the word of God declares that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power. Come on, shout power. Power just means the ability to change. Hallelujah. Power and love and sound mind. And I thank God, hallelujah, that we can cast down every imagination and every thought into the obedience of Christ. Come on, shout, clap your hand and thank God that he's delivered you from fear. The spirit of fear, it really amplifies the problem, but it really minimizes the cause or the root. I said the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear wants to amplify what's wrong with you in front of you. 
but it always wants to minimize the reason and the result. You can never get past and beyond where you are unless you deal with yourself. Oh, my God. In other words, okay, okay, let me give you this point. Do not allow the validity of your circumstances devalue the objectivity of your purpose. I know it was a long sentence right there. I know it was long. But all I'm trying to tell you is, is that you've got to understand, people of God, that what you're going through, yes, it is real. Oh, y'all, y'all some bougie folk up in here. My God. Hallelujah. I, I just need to know somebody, my God, that have gone through some things in their life. My God, that have been rough, that's been tough. And they can say, listen, the cries, the tears that I cried, they were real. The pain that I was going through was real. The suffering that was going on in my, it was real. Hallelujah. Come on, shout. It was real. What you're going through is real. But you must understand that although it may be real, hallelujah, it cannot overtake your purpose. It cannot supersede, hallelujah, what God desires for you. There, in other words, there is purpose for the problem. And can I tell you, people of God, if we have to go through the fire, if we have to go through problems, if we have to go through these situations, can I declare to you that one, number one, you've got to learn how to cover your gates. Okay, cover your gates, your gates, gates. We know what gate is, is what, call, what, what thing that, that are open for us to things, for things to get out and for things to come in. Are y'all hearing me what I say? And so you've got to learn to cover your gates. You have to learn. Hallelujah. You say, what gates do I have? Stuff that you hear. Come on here. Stuff that you see. And not only, my God, stuff that you hear and see, but it's also what comes out of your mouth. Oh, my God. See, 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 you got to cover up every hole. Come on. Stop listening and watching anything and everything. And what you must understand, the reason why God wants to take you through the fire sometime, watch this, is to increase your capacity to receive pain. Oh, my God. Uh, it increases your capacity mm -hmm, to receive pain. Why is that so important? Because we come to, into a day and time where so many people are going through. So many people, hallelujah, have needs, have conditions, my God. And God needs some soldiers. He needs some folk, my God, that won't quit every time something happens. That won't throw up, that won't throw in the towel every time something gets. He want, my God, some strong men and some strong women of God. He's not looking for no wimps. And the problem is, is that too many of us wimps in the body of Christ. Every time something happens to us, we're ready to give up and let go. We're ready to turn around. We're ready to leave the church. God needs some. We need some strong. Y'all told me this was men's day, did it? I'm just real now. I'm just kind of raw. I'm a raw kind of guy, okay? Okay, so, 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 so shall y'all pray for me? I'm just kind of raw, but um, the problem that we have, I don't know how it is here in Michigan, but the problem we have down there in Arkansas, we got a lo lot of weak men. Got a lot of weak, let me say it like this, male figures. Are you hearing me? Because don't get it twisted, there's a difference between being a male and being a man. Oh, my God. See, 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 y'all already, I say I already lost some of you. I already lost some. There's a difference between malehood and manliness. Ah, the, only, the difference is one, my God, hallelujah, being a male just gives you identity. All you got to do is look between your legs and you know you're a male. Come on. And the problem is, my God, we got so many weak men, watch this, and weak males rather, that we can't even identify ourselves and what God has called us. That's why we walk around confused. Why do I say we walk around confused? Because while we identify, may should identify ourselves as a male, we think that is our purpose. No, being a man is what gives you purpose. Oh, my God, y'all. I guess I, I don't have the right word here. Um, 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 being a man, hallelujah, is not determined by what's in between your legs. Being a man is determined, hallelujah, by how you deal with your purpose. 
folks say stuff like uh, they're a woman trapped in a man's body. No, sir. You just confused. You deceived because you have not identified your purpose yet. Because when you identify your purpose, my God, you're not going to be identified by what's in, on your body. Come on here. Because what God said, when I created, I created man. I created mankind. In other words, the Hebrew word is Adam. I created Adam, which means, my God, I created him with purpose. Yeah, men are identified by a purpose. And when he knows who he is, he's able to see the body he has and he work with. Are y'all hearing me? We know he's a man by how he responds to his assignment. That's being a man. When you can come home and love your wife and not abuse her. That's being a man. Oh, I thought I would get some more amens from the women in here. When you treat her as an effervescent fragrance and a delicate as uh, uh, the petal of an orchid. My God, that's being a man. Oh, my, 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 my. Because I don't know any real woman that, don't, that want a man that don't work. Oh, my God, y'all. Boy, 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 boy. I guess I got the wrong message. Uh, can I go deeper here? Come on, can I go deeper? Hallelujah. See, 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 when your wife is willing to submit and obey, that's being a man. Okay, hold up, hold up. I know I got some looks by some women. Hold on, I'm going to bring you back to Zion. I, I know that some of y'all looking at me like, what you mean submit and obey? Oh, my Lord. See, the key is, is when a man understands his purpose, when he understands his plight, when he understands what God has called him, then you're willing, when you got a man, a real man who understands his person, you are willing to submit because, watch this, you know that his will, the will of the man, the will of God is also submitted to your will. In other words, he's going to do what he's supposed to do so you can get what you need to get. So you don't have no problem submitting because where you're going is in the same line as my wife. Do I have a witness in here? The greatest enemy of fear of people of God is faith. I'm going to say that one more time. The greatest enemy of fear is faith. The greatest enemy of fear is your faith. While fear dismantles faith many times, it's faith that should dismantle fear. Can I declare this to you, people of God? Faith is only relevant when you're faced with challenges. Oh my God, I guess I'm by myself here. Faith is only relevant when you're faith faced with challenges. You don't need faith when you got all money you need in the bank. You don't need faith when everything in your life is going right and going well. Are y'all hearing me what I say? You need faith when you're going through. You need faith when you don't see how you're going to get out of this thing. Are you hearing me what I say? Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I learned how to pray. I learned how to grow my faith when I was going through with my wife. Oh boy, y'all. And what you must understand is that faith goes beyond your ability. But faith requires your availability. God only challenges your faith. Why? Because it is what it is faith, rather, that moves God. It's those challenges in life that cultivates the faith that's on the inside of you. I was reading a book one day by T.D. Jakes, and he wrote this line, and it blew my mind. He said, it is the necessity of not having that spawned my creativity to see the invisible. Oh, my God. In other words, it's when I did not have anything that helped me to spark my intuition to create a place 
of faith. It's when I did not have, when I did not know how I was going to get out of this thing. It was at that moment that I learned to create a space of faith. Why am I turning around? Because everything around you, hallelujah, should be among faith. Or faith, my God, should be your environment that you dwell in. Y'all know what faith is. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know how to get faith. Faith cometh by what? Hearing and uh, hearing by the word of God. So the more I hear faith, the more I receive faith, the greater my call, my environment, the greater my space. My space should be. Are you hearing me what I say? In other words, I'm trying to tell, I'm trying to help some of y'all. Hallelujah. If you want your space and your environment to be increased by faith, you got to learn, my God, how to let not let some folk into that space. Okay, okay, maybe y'all don't have it like I do. I got some cousins, my God, that's down in Florida. My God, I love them. They are my boys. They, they my everything. They, they are my family. But every now and then when we talking on the phone, when I'm going through, they don't live like I do. So every now and then I have to say, good to see you, love you, God bless you, hang up. Because I don't want you to enter this space. Come on, how you hear me? When folk want to gossip, no, nah, baby, God bless you, love you. Let's pray for our pastor. Hang it up. Oh, my God. In other words, negativity can't enter this space. Depression cannot enter this space. Oppression cannot enter this space. Do I have a witness in here that, that we can declare with me, my God? I'm not going to let the enemy try to enter this space of faith. Matter of fact, I want to prophesy to two or three of y'all that will shout back with me that God told me to tell you that where your space is, it's too small. God is trying to make it big, y'all, y'all. Come on, I need somebody that's going to prophesy that's going to declare with me that my space is too small. That where I am right now is too small. That I believe that God has greater, hallelujah, greater in my life. And so I'm going to keep creating a space of faith. So instead of me walking out, instead of me isolating myself, I'm going to keep singing my song. I'm going to keep praying my prayers. I'm going to keep coming to the church so I can build my create and create my environment of faith. Do I have a witness in here that needs a greater faith? Because God says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God for the pandemic. Why do I thank God for the pandemic? Because some of y'all folks, y'all sitting there looking at me crazy now. Ooh, Lord, yes. Some of y'all folks, I thank God for the pandemic. Because the pandemic, they told us, yes, you need to keep six feet away from you. Thank you, Jesus. And I still continue my social distancing. Because I don't want to be around nobody that don't, don't have no faith. Are you hearing me when I say I want to be connected, yes, to some people, yes, who will call upon the name of the Lord and change the situation. Do I have a witness in here? Come on, clap your hands and tell God thank you for faith. So, yes, as I hear in this thing, I thank God for faith. I thank God that these Hebrew boys, they show me how to, how to live. Even in the midst, yes, of the fire. The Bible says that when they stood before Nebuchadnezzar, the first thing we need you to know, King, is that God can. Look at somebody and say, God can. I said, God can. Yes, can just simply means, it means a Thank you, Brother Dietrich Hatton. He said God is able, yes, to do just what he said that he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Because, come on, shout, he's able. He's able. 
to do exceeding, yes, abundantly above, yes, all we can ask or even think, according to the power, yes, that worketh in you, and I thank God he can, not only can he, but the three Hebrew boys said, I know he can, and then he said he will, ooh, Lord, yes, they said God will deliver us from your hand. Are you hearing me when I say? They said he is able, yes, to deliver me, yes, from the fire and deliver me from king's domain. They were saying that we have been living for you, but we're worshiping Jehovah. Now, now this will be an opportunity for us to be delivered, yes, from your tyranny. So they said God. God will. Come on, shout God will. I thank God that God will because will is. It's an intransitive verse which simply means yes. Y'all didn't know y'all were going to English class. It's an intransitive verb which simply means that when you use the word will, you can leave it alone. In other words, you can just say God will and put a period by it. Are you hearing me what I say? But I thank God that as I studied, yes, the word will, it means, watch this, it means to determine, it means to purpose to. In other words, whenever you say will, it means to predetermine, it means purpose to. Okay, what are you saying, preacher? When you say God will, you're saying God meant to. Are you hearing me what I say? Touch somebody and tell them God will. Come on, say, God will. God meant to. What do you mean he meant to do? When I was sick, God will heal. When I was unsaved, God will save. When I was down, God will lift me up. Do I have a witness in here that know that God can and God will? I want you to think of one thing that you need God to do. Think of that one verse that you need God to do. And I need y'all to help me preach. And when I count to three, I want you to say God will. And put the verb behind it. If it's save your children, yes, God will save. If it's to give you deliverance, God will deliver. Do you have your thing that you need God to do? Come on, lift your hands. And on the count of three, when I say God will, put it behind it. One, two, three. God will. God will heal. God will deliver. God meant to raise me up. God meant to put food on my table. God meant to put clothes on my back. God meant to heal my body. God meant to change my mind. God will. God will. Come on, shout. God will. God will. God will. And if he does not, thank God for the word. Because if he does not, he's still able. And I'm still not going to bow. I don't care what it looks like. I'm not going to give up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I may be in the fire, but I'm going to keep on walking. I may be in the fire, but I'm keep on going through. Thank you, Jesus. And as I close, can I give you the end? The end of my testimony. Brother Pastor, yes. While I was in Atlanta, all hell going through. Lost everything. Are you hearing me when I say? Thought everything was over. Ooh, Lord. I didn't want to go back home because I was going to be an embarrassment. Are you hearing me when I say? And I was mad at God. I guess I'm just by myself. I was mad at God. Why in the world, yes, would you take me through this? You the one told me to come to Atlanta. You the one told me to do everything. You the one told me to give up this church. And as 
I was sitting there in Bishop Matthew Brown's church. It was on the first Sunday. I'll never forget it. The first Sunday in September. I was sitting there with my collar on. And it seemed like everybody in there was jumping and shouting, was praising God. And here I was crying, trying to figure out why are you taking me through this? I don't feel like clapping. I don't feel like jumping. Okay, see y'all bullshit. Anybody been there? I come into Christ trying to figure out when it's going to change. But as I was sitting there, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, listen here. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord, it is your strength. Thank you, Jesus. He said, the joy of the Lord, it is your strength. I got mad again because if you know where I am, whenever they quote that scripture, it means get up and jump. It means to shout. It means to clap your hands and open your mouth. I got more mad. And I said, God, I ain't finna clap my hands. I'm not finna do it. And he spoke one more time. The joy of the Lord, it is your strength. I said, God, this don't make sense. But I've been saved long enough that you've given me a message. So what do you want me to hear? And I got my device, and I looked up the term joy. Thank you, Jesus. Brother F.T. Marsh, a great theologian, he gave the definition of joy. Y'all want to hear it? He gave the definition of joy. He said joy is the consciousness of God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all don't miss it. Don't miss it. The consciousness of God's grace. Y'all know what consciousness is. It means to be aware. It means to open up. It means when the light bulb goes off, you have an understanding. Are you hearing me when I ain't say? So when I thought about, thank you, Jesus, while I was sitting there mad, the Bible says through F.T. Marsh that joy is the consciousness of God's grace. I started thinking about God saved me when I was a young man. He got me out when I was abused. He got me out when I wanted to give up. Are you hearing me when I say? Even when church folks wanted to give me up, God called me. Are you hearing me when I say? I was sitting there in Atlanta thinking about my Jesus. And when I thought about him, I messed around and I saw my hands go up. Are you hearing me when I say? When I thought about it, how God, how we saved my wife and saved her from cancer. My feet got light. Are you hearing me when I say? All I'm trying to tell you is when you think of what God has done for you, you can't help but say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You brought me back. You brought me back from death door. You brought me back before. If you did it before, you can do it again. Touch somebody and tell him if he did it before, he can do it again. Before the service was out, Pastor, I was shouting and dancing. Was I still going through? Did I know not? Did I not know how I was gonna get out? Oh, see, y'all ain't feeling me here. I didn't know how God was gonna make a way even the next day. I guess y'all ain't feeling me yet. The musicians got me. Anybody going through right now that you need God to do, I need you to throw your hands up and give God some praise.
you're standing, listen. This message really was not to emotionalize you. But it was really to challenge you. Because the world as we, that we live in now has many challenges. Many areas of opportunities that we have to get hold of. And so many times when we're coming to look for the answer in ministry, in church, many times we can't find it because everybody put the little church, churchology on it like they ain't gone through. Like, come on, y'all. My Lord, y'all going to leave me hanging by myself. Seem like everybody got it going on. When you ask them how they're doing, blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Well, you know what? I need to talk to somebody that's been through something. You know, sis, you ask somebody, hey, sis, how's it going? Listen, listen, I've had a rough week, but I'm here to get something from God. That's not, that's not advertising what the devil is and what he's done. No, that's just being real and touching and connecting with someone to let them know, listen, you ain't the only one that's going through. And since you got to go through and I got to go through, listen, we might as well do what the Word of God says. And where there are two or three as in touching and degree, he says, I will be in the midst. I want to talk to you. God sent me all the way from Arkansas to ask you if you're in this place. Now, normally I title, I would title this message, you ain't coming out of this. Because some things God wants you to go through. And if you are in this place, you're saying, Pastor, I know you spoke to me because there's some things in my life that I have not figured out why I'm still in it, why it's been taking so long. I'm ready to get out of this thing. I've been trying to, wondering, I've been traumatized, I've been bewildered. If that's you in this place, I want to pray for you. Come on down, if you would. Come on, come on. Don't think about it, just do it. Come on, come on, come on. Meet me at this altar. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I didn't say you wasn't saved. I said you're going through. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be thinking about it now. Y'all go on. Y'all come on. Come on. Because I'm going to close it. Glory to God. Because sometimes we sit there and we say, you know what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I sure is. That's how we talk at down south. Glory to God. Come on, if that's you, Pastor, I'm going through. I'm in the fire right now. I've been mad at God. I've been disappointed and don't realize how I'm going to get out of this thing. But God has sent this word just for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's you, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As I told you before, my testimony was when I thought about what God has done for me, what God did bring me out, how God made a way for me. Glory to God. When I started remembering what God is and what God has done, I started forgetting about what I was going through. That what I was going through started becoming small. Hallelujah. Because I realized if God brought me out of that before, I know he can bring me out of this. Many times, Pastor, we try to figure out what it is that people need. It's not that people need content anymore. Because they can go on, the, on their devices and get content all day go to several services all day or just on your device but I found out and I've learned that people need connection are y'all hearing me and it's time for us people of God the church of God in Christ Jackson Memorial to make certain that we are connecting with people that's how we're going to grow church that's how we're going to grow ministry that's how we're going to get people saved and delivered is by connecting with folk that's why I gave this message because it connects with us that you know some of us go through. Even the preacher go through. I don't know who wrote that song. But he says I'm going through. I don't going through. I don't care what the rest of the world decide to do. I laid up my, made up my mind. I ain't going to turn around. 
started with my Jesus saying, I'm going, thank you. And then he said, I got to go through. Hallelujah. Lift your hands on this altar. Lift your hands. You're looking at a man. Hallelujah. Who's gone through so much. My dad is a preacher. Been pastoring for over 44 years. But I was a wayward boy. I was abused at nine. I'm just giving my testimony. I was abused at nine and again at 12. Did not tell one soul. And I lived many years trying to prove that I was a man and a guy and a real man. And I did that by sleeping around, sleeping around with women all over. My Lord. I'm not telling you to feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you my story. But I thank God that God delivered me. Had children before I was married. Had children out of wedlock. I was one of the ones they sat down in church, y'all. Oh my God. Thank you, mama. They used to sit you down. Yeah, I was the one sitting down and trying to figure out why you sit me down and the deacon's son over here doing the same thing I did. But you want to sit me down because I'm the pastor's kid. I'm telling you, I've been there, done that. But you're looking at a man who's saved, who's delivered, who's smiling. I don't have to question who I am. I know what God made me. glory to God hallelujah when I didn't have a dime too embarrassed to ask my daddy would look in the refrigerator and all I had was spoiled milk and some butter Guess I'm just by myself in here I know what it is but I thank God hallelujah I can eat wherever I want to do drive whatever I want to drive I wear custom if I want to wear it hallelujah I know what it is to go through and if God did it for me I know he can do it for you and I speak and I decree in the name of Jesus come on saints lift your hands come on let's pray for these people of God I thank you in the name of Jesus that God you get all the glory and all the praise in this that you sent me all the way from Jonesboro Arkansas to tell these men, men and women of God that even though the tests and trials are tough and they are rough, that God has declared to you that even though the devil meant it for bad, it did not work in your life. It will not, it will not work. And I declare and I decree by the power invested in me that you shall be the woman that God has called you to be at the Boshah in the name of Jesus that you will rest at night in the, in the name of Jesus that every nightmare will be cast down in the name of Jesus that you will walk in deliverance you will walk in freedom you will walk in the fullness of God in Jesus name God called you hallelujah be a man of purpose and we declare in Jesus name that God will bless you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet that you will walk in victory in the name of Jesus that you will not be ashamed but you will walk in joy you will walk in the strength of God in the name of Jesus oh those shot oh my years of hurt years of abuse father I thank you now God for deliverance thank you for freedom Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you, Bosha. That Bosha, yeah. In the Bosha, in the Bosha, yeah. In the Asha, yeah. In the name of Jesus, in the Asha, you shall live and not die. In the name of Jesus, and declare the Asha, the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor shall not be in vain in the Lord touch mama thank you father for the years that she lived for you that she's known you father I thank you my shelter that the latter years shall be greater than the past every promise you made let it come to pass every tear she cried your word declares that she shall reap in joy in the
the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you that you can do anything but fail. Hatabasha. In the Abosha. In the name of Jesus. Hatabosha. Greater level of intercession. Greater level of intercession. Greater level of intercession. Can I lay hands on your mother? Greater level, levels, levels of intercession. I don't know if I've ever seen you before, but oh my God, the prayer, my tabasha, ah, my, 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 the praying spirit, ah, my God, God has anointed your hands, hands of healing, hand and we declare in the name of Jesus that as Abosha, that as she lay hands on the people of God, they shall be healed. They shall be delivered. They shall be set free in the name of Jesus. And to deliver Hosayaba in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody in this house. Come on, come on, praise God in this house. Come on, praise Him in this house. Come on. Come on, if you need anything from God, praise Him in this house. Come on, come on, come on. Mother, I hear God saying, God, I've been going through this a long time. Been dealing with this a long time. Glory to God. This is what I believe, Mama. I don't believe that the saints are to suffer. Now, that's just me. You believe that? Do you believe that? believe in suffering way right but I believe that he doesn't desire for us to always suffer does that that make sense yeah. I don't believe that we should always suffer and so I'm gonna pray that God because I hear God telling me to declare to you that you have to learn to speak those things declare those things in your life declare those things around you declare those things in your mind that be not as though they were that God is going to minister to your mind hallelujah and you can declare the word of God that declares that I am healed and I am delivered I am made whole in the name of Jesus and I pray for this mother right now that she will declare hallelujah that God is a good God a great God and greatly to be praised she will declare the works of God in the name of Jesus, every wolf in sheep clothing will be exposed in Jesus' name. And I speak to people that will come around her with faith. Hatabasha, in the Ejosha, in the name of Jesus, that it is because of faith. You shall be lived. You shall be healed. You shall be made whole. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He makes rich and add no sorrow. You're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and coming out in the name of Jesus. And it is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. I want to pray for you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you, Pastor? First Lady, can I just pray for you? Hallelujah. I'm not going to lay hands on you, but I just want to pray for you. Pastor and First Lady, if you would. Hallelujah. The reason why I'm asking you to stand here, glory to God. Hallelujah, because it's symbolic of the Holy of Holies when the priest could only go into the Holy of Holies at one time. And this man of God stands as your priest, as your intercessor. Glory to God. And I just came to encourage you today and let you know, hallelujah, that God has called you here for such a time as this. I see, I see you working changes in your mind. Same, same God, you're challenging me to do something different. Kind of challenging me to be something different. You're challenging me to go a different way. But this church has been used to doing it that way. God said, not only am I giving you vision, but I'm giving you provision.
And I ain't just talking about money. I'm talking about people resources. Glory to God. I hear you. Your heart is. Glory to God. I need a youth pastor. I need a youth leader. I hear your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God said, not only am I going to send them, glory to God, but you're going to be able to maintain them in the name of Jesus. That growth will happen. Hallelujah. That what I have spoken, what I have charged this place to be, Hallelujah. It will come to pass. In the name, everybody that believes it, I need you to point your hands this way, my God. And I need you right now to pray for this man and woman of God right now. That God will touch. That God will continue to give vision. That God will continue to give, hallelujah, the mission for this house. In the name of Jesus, that it will be standing room only. That even in the last days, that men and women will come. Hallelujah. From the north, south, east, and west. That God will do a new thing. In the name of Jesus, we declare it and decree it that it is so, and so it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, everybody, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. First lady, continue to be yourself remind me of my wife she um when we first got married she said I ain't Koji and I'll never be Koji that's what she told me she said I'm gonna support you but I ain't gonna do all this thing. Mm -mm. when God appointed me to this this last church the church that I'm in she sat in the back I told the folk leave her alone now she's sitting up in the front beside me powerful woman of God I have this in my car and I'm going to give this to you I'm going to sow this into you she has written a prayer journal glory to God and I see ministry over you I see a writing ministry glory to God I see writing I see a pen in you in your bosom where you're going to write you have a great testimony that you can share glory to God you tell me if I'm lying just tell me if I'm lying hallelujah Glory to God. I'll be all right. I'll go sit down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've just seen you in a distance, but we've never talked. Hallelujah. But I see the ministry of pen in you that you're going to write. I don't know if it's songs, poems, or a book. I don't know what it is, but I see it. Hallelujah. And God, as God anoints you, glory to God, it's going to get in the right hand with the right person, and it's going to go, I don't know what the word is other than they talk viral, but what is that when your book go? Anyway, bestseller, that's it. Praise the Lord. I hear God saying that. And I believe it. You receive it? Come on, shout out, receive it. Amen. How many of y'all believe it? Praise God. God bless you. I'm tired. I'm sorry. God bless you. That's all I have. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise God for this man. Come on, praise God again. Listen, just got a message that we need to pray for Mother Stanet. Come on, y'all. Is this a praying church? Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Come on, if it was your mama, you want somebody to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come asking and expecting now that you would touch Mother Stanet. Oh, God, lift her right now, God. Uh, hey, God, give us strength in her body. Uh, God, give us strength in her mind. In the name of Jesus, uh, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus stands against you now. Uh, we pray, God, that you give her power from on high. Holy Ghost, have your way. You rule and you super rule. All power is in your hand. Uh, let your glory be revealed. Let your power be manifest. Even right now, God, do it for her now. Touch those around her. God, give them the faith uh, to call on your great name. Uh, we'll believe you for victory right now. We'll trust you for victory right now. 
we pray for Sylvester in the name of Jesus God that you touch his body in the name of Jesus come on call out your loved one call out the person that you need God to pray for God bless these sons bless the daughter bless the mother bless the father in the name of bless the uncle God bless the auntie bless the niece bless the nephew hey God yes God hey God hey strengthen them right now we thank you for your power we thank you for your power we thank you for your power in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name oh it's something about the name of Jesus I dare you to say in Jesus name pain go away in Jesus name stroke you got to go in Jesus name aneurysm stop in Jesus name high blood pressure come down in Jesus name low blood pressure come up in Jesus name blood sugar be regulated in Jesus name hey in the name of Jesus thank you for the power 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 hey God yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord thank you for the joy thank you for the peace thank you for the consolation we thank you for it now Yay. hallelujah 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 come on and clap your hands and give God a praise in this house hallelujah Let's praise God again for this messenger and the message. Thank you, Superintendent Coleman. Thank you for sharing with us. Listen, I want you to be a blessing to ministry, of course. Jackson Memorial is 100% tithe paying church. We trust and believe God one-tenth of our increase and one-seventh of our time. And because God is a generous God, we're generous people and we give. Because God is a generous God, we're generous people and we give. So we're trusting and believing that God is able to sow back into us. He gives seed to the sower. Give seed to the sower before they come. Listen, there may be someone watching and listening. You don't know Jesus Christ in the part of your sins. You're living beneath your privilege. We want to make sure, you should want to make sure that when you close your eyes on this side, you can open them on the other side and see the Lord in peace. Amen. And we can do that. The Bible said he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we confess it to him, just like we learned in Sunday school this morning, if you confess it to him, oh yeah, he's, he'll, he'll do what you need him to do. He also says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. Let me get open your mouth and say something under salvation. I want you to pray this prayer with me today. Uh, some of you be praying uh, as part of what we do. Some of you are going to pray it for the first time by faith because you need God to pull you out of a sin-sick situation. And uh, we're believing that God can do that for you right now. Would you say this prayer with me, those watching and those here? Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. I believe you lived and died for my sins. And God raised you from the dead for my salvation. And you ascended into heaven to sit at his right hand. Hallelujah. Come into my heart. And I thank you for salvation now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and praise God for salvation. Hallelujah. We, we're grateful to God for the gift of salvation. Amen. Thank you. All right. Come on, uh, finance team. As you're coming, you're preparing to give. All tithers are standing. And if it's your Sunday to pay your tithes, uh, you're going to, you're preparing yourself to give. Amen. All tithers are standing. If you're a tither, you're standing. Come on, tithers stand. 
stand up tithers you encourage the others that are not tithers to become a tither because you tithe believe in God by faith not that faith but faith that's in the Bible amen yeah you believe in God by faith uh, that he will do the Bible says he'll open up windows in heaven and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive he said he rebuked the devourer for your name say he will do it oh he will do it I've seen him do it sister Huddleston I've seen him do it he will do it yes and he gives seed to the sower so I want you to sow a seed today and then listen I want you to add something to your seed what did I just say I want you to add something to your seed so we can be a blessing to the minister this morning okay uh, for those that can and will I want you to get a tangible gift uh, to be a blessing to the minister to this great preacher that shared with us on today poured from the word of God into our lives yes and we're grateful we're grateful when God gives you something you ought to say thank you <laughs> yeah so we're going to say thank you we're going to say our appreciation with our gift today all right all right with that gift in your hand if you're giving cash app is dollar sign jmt kojic dollar sign jmt cogic if you have a card we have a card reader if you're going to give by check make it out to jackson memorial temple church of god in christ or jmt kojic just make sure it's clear by 9 a.m tomorrow morning amen if you're going to give via uh, the website, you can go to the website, www.jmtkodrick. For those of you who are in the app, you can give right there in the app. It's all the ways of giving. Hey, Amen. Everyone stand, stand with your gift. And we're going to believe and trust God and pray that he's going he's gonna to bless you in a special way. Come on, everyone standing, standing with your gift. Everyone stand. If you say, I don't have nothing at all, stand out of obedience. Hey, Amen. Thank you. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. I see some of you trying to get it together on your phones. I understand. Amen. Thank you. Father, we thank you for blessing us and bringing us to this point. Now, God, as we sow these seeds for the sake of ministry, we bring our tithes into your storehouse that we meet in your house, uh, that your, your word gives us promise to the tither, and we expect those promises to manifest in our life. And then you said you'll give seed to the sower, that whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And then you said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaken together, running over, pressed down, running over, shall man give into our bosom. We're looking for it and expecting it now uh, by the power that's in your word. By faith, we accept it and receive it. In Jesus' name, would you look at somebody and say, here I go again. Believe in God. Amen. For those that are going to walk around with you, face the walls, start from the rear, take your direction from the ushers, and bring your gifts unto the Lord as you bring and say, I believe God.
if you're expecting the harvest from what you've given, come on, let's praise God for the harvest that's coming into your life. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again. It's so good to see Mother Frida Brown Williams with us today. Yeah. Thank God for Mother Frida being back with us. And definitely was great to see Mother Ethel Mae Johnson. We continue to pray for our mothers. All right, listen, meet us back at 4 p.m. What did I say? Meet us back at 4 p.m. for our men's day service. Our very special guest, Bishop Joe O. Wilkins Sr., all the way from South Haven, is going to be here to help us celebrate men's day. Some folks from Adams Memorial will be with us and others from, uh, then we have some folks here that's on program. Yeah, so you got to come, come back to see uh, what God is doing in the midst of the men. Now, listen, I don't want folk to come from all the way on the other side of Michigan. And then they're going to be waiting for us to get here. Testing, one, two, testing. Hello, can you hear me? All right. I don't want them coming all the way from South Haven and then waiting for us to get here. All right, so we're going to be here. We're going to be here at 4 o'clock, ready to go. All right, we're standing. We're standing. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, Elder Craig Simpson. Oh, that's right. Uh, Sister uh, Elder Simpson. Come, Elder Simpson. Come on, y'all give him a hand. He walking up here nervous like he in trouble. An incredible job with Vacation Bible School. Woo! Woo! Incredible job. Incredible job. Incredible job. And then we, we said we're going to give $1,000 to whoever brought the most people. Uh, had to be above 10. They had to do it for three days in a row. Did we have somebody? I don't believe we have. We do have somebody? Yeah, we got. You don't know? Well, the thing, well, we'll talk about it, Pastor. Oh, <laughs> Lord. I mean, sooner we get you right in the front. But they're supposed to be also from Sunday school. Oh. Part of the criteria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so for Vacation Bible School, uh, the person who brought I think some 15 people was Ramona Jean Parrish. $1,000 goes to Ramona Jean Parrish. God bless you. Thank you. And then for all the, all the team, everybody that was on the uh, Community Day Committee, raise your hand. Raise your hand, Community Day. Incredible job, Community Day. Incredible job. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, Mother, Mother Constantine. Man, she worked so hard. I mean, Mother was working, boy. I mean, she was working. And somebody would come in, and she would, she would, she, boy, she would bring them on in. Come on in. Then she'd sit them down, and she'd talk to them and tell them about the church. She made sure that people felt invited. I was watching her work over there. I was watching her work. Thank you, thank you, Mother. Thank you to the entire committee that helped make it a tremendous success. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good food. Oh, yeah, Sister Lightfoot. Uh, where is she at? She, she, she was working on the grill. I mean, man, I, Lord have mercy. All right, I started calling there. I done messed up, did I? I done messed up. Yeah, and then, and then for those who got the, those uh, sponsors and vendors and resources to come out to be a part, incredible! It was like a giraffe, an elephant with a giraffe on top with a big top hat on. It was, it was big. It was big. It was big. Thank you. Thank you to all of those who participated in some way. And Lord, we thank you and we appreciate you blessing us today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for encouraging us today, God, as we, we lift the, the heaviness. We thank you, God, for encouraging our hearts and lifting us today. Thank you for Superintendent Anthony Coleman. God, we pray your blessings upon him 
and his wife and his family and his ministry. God, that you would bless each and every one of us that are here today in a special way. We thank you, God, for being with us today that you are, ah, God, you never leave us nor forsake us, uh, but you're always with us. And for that, we say thank you. And now, now we declare and pronounce over these, your people, that the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you, for he is with you. He's with you in the morning. He's with you in the evening. He's with you in your coming. He's with you in your going. He's with you in rejoicing and he's with you in your weeping. For God is for you. The Lord our God is for you. And all the people of God said amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Love the Lord. Remember, love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. We see you tonight, this afternoon at 4 p.m.